The central nervous system is formed by the brain, the spinal cord, and the peripheral nerves. The main parts of the brain are the brainstem, the diencephalon, cerebral hemispheres, and cerebellum. Neurons and glial cells are the basic units of the nervous system. Each neuron is composed of a cell body, where the nucleus is localized, one axon, and several dendrites. Around 100 billion neurons exist in the brain, each one establishing connections with roughly 10,000 other neurons. This vast number resembles the number of stars estimated to be present in the universe. Electrical signals are integrated by neurons as if their cell body was a calculator. Adding excitatory and inhibitory signals, the cell body sends a message through the axon whenever a positive result is achieved. This message propagates along the axon through the generation of action potentials. But what is indeed an action potential? Let's rewind our story a little, near the cell body, to explain deep inside the nature of this nerve pulse. The neuron presents a dynamic electrochemical gradient across the plasma membrane. This gradient is due to the different ion concentrations inside and outside the cell, and to the several intracellular proteins negatively charged. Particular focus will be given to the role of potassium and sodium ions on action potentials, although other ions are involved in its fine regulation. The concentration of potassium ions is higher inside the cell at its resting state. On the other hand, sodium concentration is higher outside. This ion concentration gradient is generated by the passive influx of potassium ions driven by the excess of intracellular protein negative charges. The presence of open potassium channels during the membrane resting state makes it more permeable to potassium than to sodium ions. This selective membrane permeability is responsible for the observed minus 60 to minus 90 millivolt difference during the resting potential. When a neuron is stimulated, membrane depolarization to more positive potential values is observed, followed by repolarization that turns the membrane back to its resting potential. An action potential is generated by this transmembrane potential change. Let's see this process in closer detail. A significant number of voltage-sensitive sodium channels open at the beginning of the action potential. This fast inward sodium current causes a sudden and localized depolarization of the plasma membrane, which in turn makes more sodium channels open. During membrane depolarization, progressive opening of voltage-sensitive potassium channels is observed. In a few milliseconds, the membrane potential may reach 30 millivolts. The voltage-sensitive sodium channels return to the closed state at this voltage while more voltage-sensitive potassium channels open. The outflux of potassium increases, leading to membrane repolarization. This fast potassium flux causes membrane hyperpolarization, and the resting membrane potential approaches the equilibrium potential of potassium. The voltage-sensitive sodium channels close during this repolarization. The ionic gradient is re-established, in part due to the action of the sodium-potassium pump whose activity varied throughout the action potential. This is an important activity that involves about 25% of all energy consumption in a resting human being. The existence of a myelin insulation coating around some axons makes the action potential transmission faster. The myelin coating surrounding the axon is not continuous. The existence of several gaps exposes a high density of voltage-sensitive sodium channels to the extracellular side. This allows a quicker conduction of the nerve signal in a jumping manner throughout the non-myelinated region. After an action potential, the voltage-sensitive sodium channels stay temporarily inactive in what is called the refractory period. This ensures that action potentials are propagated unidirectionally 
from the cell body to the axon terminus. In some situations, an unbalance between inhibitory and excitatory signals can occur, leading to a hyperexcitability of the neuronal network. An epileptic crisis may develop when this happens. Several drugs that mimic the mechanism of action of some natural neurotoxins have been developed in order to treat this disorder. Natural neurotoxins are used by several species to defend themselves against predators as well as to paralyze their prey. The poison of the seashell species, Conus geographus, is a cocktail made of peptides and other compounds, some of them blocking the voltage-sensitive sodium channels, thus interrupting action potential propagation through the nervous cells. This effect causes paralysis and has been adopted by this species as a strategy to immobilize faster prey. Another example is the puffer fish, which uses tetrodotoxin, or TTX, for self-defense. TTX interacts with the voltage-sensitive sodium channel, blocking and restraining the influx of sodium ions through the channel and halting the transmission of action potentials. This knowledge allowed the development of some anti-epileptic drugs that act on the voltage-sensitive sodium channel in a way similar to TTX, although it can interact on different channel domains. By preventing the influx of sodium ions through the channel, it inhibits the transmission of action potential, diminishing the activity of the neuronal network.